Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Red Hook Town Board meeting of Wednesday, November 16th, 2022. Would you be kind enough to join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, welcome. Uh, for the folks at home, we have on the screen uh, tonight's agenda. We'll be discussing, well, we have two public hearings. One is uh, a long awaited, with many extensions, um, adopting the franchise agreement with uh, Charter, aka Spectrum. And then we have uh, shortly thereafter a public hearing on the fire contracts with our two fire companies. And any public comments, we're moving right into those approvals. We have some ministerial work to do for our grant, a mostly grant funded program, Bridge New York, which is the Aspen Wall Bridge Replacement Project. And um, we are not going to be doing any action on the police services agreement. Um, we have not yet received those new rates from the Village of Red Hook. We're going to have some discussion on the LWRP, begin our environmental review work, and uh, take a look at a local law as it pertains to uh, that initiative. We have another uh, pro forma uh, contract renewal, an annual renewal for our water systems operator for District 1, and uh, that agreement again with Spectra. Then we'll be going into um, executive session and or attorney client at the end of uh, these agenda items. So without further ado, uh, why don't we get started, Deanna, please, if we could. The public hearing notice for Spectrum franchise agreement. Please take notice that a public hearing extended from June 14th, 2022, further extended from July 12th, 2022, and further extended from August 29th, 2022, and further extended from September 28th, 2022, and further extended from October 26th, 2022, will be held by the Town Board of the Town of Red Hook at Town Hall 7340 South Broadway, Red Hook, New York, on the 16th day of November, 2022, to hear all interested persons on a proposed franchise renewal agreement between the Town of Red Hook and Spectrum Northeast LLC, an indirect subsidiary of Charter Communications Incorporated, Spectrum has submitted an application to construct and operate a cable television system within the Town of Red Hook and has requested a grant by the Town Board of a non-exclusive franchise. The Town Board has the authority to grant said franchise pursuant to Town Law Section 64-7 after holding a duly noted public hearing that affords the public the opportunity to provide comment. The Town Board has determined that pursuant to 6 new NYCRR 617.5C7, the proposed franchise renewal agreement constitutes a Type 2 action as defined under the State Environmental Quality Review Act, CEQRA. Project doc documents will be posted with the meeting agenda at the Town's website. All interested persons will be given an opportunity to be heard in person or by directing written comments by mail or email in advance of the hearing to town clerk at redhookny.gov and 758-845-758-4606 by 4 o'clock p.m. the day of the hearing. Please note franchise renewal agreement in the subject. Written comments may be dropped in the town's drop box in advance of the hearing at the town hall, 7340 South Broadway, Red Hook, New York, 12571 by 4 o'clock p.m. the day of the hearing. Please observe all the recommendations of the CDC regarding distancing and use of masks. All comments so received in advance of the hearing will be noted in the hearing record. All reasonable accommodations will be made by, for persons with disabilities. In such a case, please notify the town clerk in advance at the above address or by phone so the arrangements can be made. By order of the town board of the town of Red Hook dated October 26, 2022, Deanna Cochran, town clerk, town of Red Hook. Thank you, Deanna, and um, at this time, I'd like to go ahead and uh, open the public hearing. Is there anybody who would like to make any comments on it? No, Eric, you're going to witness, but no comments on it. We have with us tonight Eric Ryback from Public Access of Northern Duchess. And, uh, sure, go ahead. Thank you. Well, you know, 
from the point of view of uh, Panda Public Access, this is really important because uh, it will allow us to upgrade to modern technology. We've been way behind the times for many years. And uh, this will allow us both to uh, have our signal on cable as we've had in the past. We've been off for some months uh, because our old technology finally bit the dust. But more importantly, it will allow us to do some new things uh, to make our programming available as video on demand to everybody in the municipalities uh, through a variety of methods, website, uh, through um, any devices that people have for streaming, such as Roku's, um, and uh, will also allow us to do some nifty things uh, with uh, meeting recordings, uh, such as chaptering, so that if somebody is really just interested in the fifth item on an agenda when they're watching a recording uh, that they can go right to it. So, uh, so we're very excited that uh, this franchise agreement will provide the funding uh, for this new technology. Great. Thank you very much, Eric, and thanks for all your work. Uh, folks should know that uh, you know the Panda has, I believe, only one employee. Is that right, Eric? And everybody else is a volunteer. That's right. And so we really appreciate that. Um, someone had mentioned at a public hearing, I think the last meeting or two, why weren't there more pe people in the audience? And well, part of it is because we're doing our best to try to bring government to the people so that they don't literally have to come here if they can't uh, fit it in their schedule in order to participate and be involved and see what's going on in their local community. So this is really important, uh, an important step, and we appreciate the fact that you all have um, the acumen to uh, determine what's needed for the equipment because I can assure you that at least in my case I wouldn't know what that equipment is and so um, I'm pleased to report that we did uh, with with uh, a lot of help from our attorney to the town come to a final resolution um, for this agreement and uh, for the folks at home I think they'll be the ones ultimately who will uh, win with this contract and and just so you know at home uh, the cable company uh, gives us five percent of the revenues that are generated by um, the fees that you pay to them and in addition to this capital contribution to upgrade the equipment and um, if, if folks at home don't already know Panda has relocated from the village of Tivoli and is now at the community center and so the studio and, and, and everything is right there, so this is a you know a great move, I think. So thanks again, Eric. All right. Um, any other comments? Anybody who want to uh, no? Okay, at this time I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing. Seconded. Thank you very much. Any further discussion? All in favor? Julia Solomon. Hi. Jacob Testa. Hi. Hi. I'm doing roll calls because I'm used to doing Zoom videos when we don't need to do roll calls. We'll get that. You can go back in time as well. Um, we have a second public hearing on a fire protection district contract. Deanna, if you'd be kind enough to read the notice. Please take notice that a concurrent public hearing will be held by the Town Board of the Town of Red Hook on November 16, 2022 at 7.35 p.m. local time at the Town Hall, 7340 South Broadway, Red Hook, New York, 12571. One, to hear all interested persons regarding a proposed fire pr protection district fire service agreement between the Town of Red Hook and the Village of Tivoli for 2023 and 2024 and two, to hear all interested persons regarding a proposed fire protection district fire service agreement between the town of Red Hook and the village of Red Hook and the Red Hook Fire Company for 2023 and 2024. Both agreements relate to the existing Red Hook Fire Protection District embracing the territory outside the villages of Red Hook and Tivoli. All interested persons will be given an opportunity to be heard in person or by directing written comments by mail or by email in advance of the hearing to town clerk at redhooknny.gov and 845-758-4606 by 4 o'clock p.m. the day of the hearing. Please note fire contracts in the subject. 
Written comments may be dropped in the town's drop box in advance of the hearing at the Town Hall, 7340 South Broadway, Red Hook, New York, 12571 by 4 o'clock p.m. the day of the hearing. Please observe the recommendations of the CDC regarding distancing and use of masks. All comments so received in advance of the hearing will be noted in the hearing record. All reasonable accommodations will be made for persons with disabilities. In such a case, please notify the town clerk in advance at the above address or by phone 845-758-4606 so that arrangements can be made. Please take further notice that copies of said proposed agreement are available for review at the Town Hall, 7340 South Broadway, Red Hook, New York, 12571. By order of the Town Board of the Town of Red Hook, dated October 11th, 2022, Deanna Cochran, Town Clerk, Town of Red Hook. Thank you very much, Deanna. At this time, I'd like to open the public hearing. Would anybody like to comment on this? Okay. Hearing none, and for the folks at home, uh, we contract with the two uh, fire companies, uh, Tivoli and Red Hook. Uh, the Tivoli Fire Company uh, services the area primarily west of 9G as it goes to Kruger Island and then heads out east on the north, uh, Curly Corners Road, uh, Gusky area. We can show you a map someday, or in fact, we should probably put that on the website. And then the rest is for uh, the Red Hook Fire Company. We have two separate contracts with them, and um, we do it in two-year increments, and that's what this is, the iteration 23 and 24. I've advised the board it's quite likely in 23 we'll need to amend these contracts um, in part if we were to uh, entertain an increase in the low sap stipend. It's a small stipend that's given to these volunteer firefighters to help offset the expenses that they incur um, involved with their uh, volunteerism. But for now, what we have is uh, yet another annual increase for both companies. And are there any questions, board members? Okay. Um, at this time, I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I'm entertaining one. Bill? So moved. Second. So moved. Okay, second, Jacob. All in favor, Julia? Aye. Myself, aye. Very good. Patrick, would you be kind enough to uh, put on the screen, we have a couple of announcements we would like folks to be aware of. We'll jump around a little bit here. Um, as you know, um, the Red Hook Thanksgiving Committee, uh, Patty Bowman for uh, many years, uh, pulled this off with volunteers a community Thanksgiving dinner, now partnering with Red Hook Responds, uh, upcoming next week, as a matter of fact. So uh, Thanksgiving orders are available for pickup at the firehouse on Thanksgiving Day from noon to 2 p.m. And so you can sign up on the Red Hook Responds website. And uh, for the folks at home, if they could Take a look at that link there below. All right, next up. So we just want to let, because uh, we've had some questions, folks want to know if there are a change in our schedule at the recycling center because of the days um, Saturday falls on Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve day. And um, our dedicated workers will be there to accept um, all of your recycling and trash on those days. Normal hours, 7.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Okay, and then we can go, that's all the announcements I have. Does anybody else have any announcements? No? I know the village will uh, be talking soon about their Christmas holidays and um, other holidays coming up this winter. We'll do that perhaps at our next meeting. Which brings me to the subject we have scheduled on our agenda before we get to the supervisor's report, a December 13th town board meeting. We, um, I don't think, formally canceled the second November meeting. Did we do that, Deanna? Do you know? I don't uh, believe so. That was to be the 23rd, the night before Thanksgiving. I don't believe we have, no. Yeah, so 
Um, for now, I'd like to modify our town board meeting schedule or suggest that we do to uh, hold one a regular meeting on December 13th, and then we'll do a floater for the other meetings. Okay. All right. What day of the week is the 13th? Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday the 13th, yeah. <coughs> All right. Good. Um, did we vote on that? All in favor, Bill? Aye. Julia? Aye. Jacob? Aye. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm launching right into the supervisor's report. Patrick, would you be kind enough of to scroll to the next page, please? Okay. And the next page after that. At the bottom, and blow up those numbers if you could. The bottom chart. What? Okay, there you go. Um, this is for the period ending October 31st, started with an opening balance of 9158000 receipts of 588000 disbursements of 236000 and change, an ending balance of $9.5 million. And uh, for the folks at home, we'll let you know that um, our community preservation fund money is doing quite well. We are now, I believe, over $3 million in the preservation fund with some projects, hopefully, uh, on the horizon in the near future. Okay. Um, you also have your variance report, and you have some budget adjustments, town board members. Are there any questions about those materials? Okay. Um, at this Time. I would entertain a motion to accept the supervisor's report. Second. All in favor, Jacob? Aye. Patrick, I see that you've got vouchers. Do we also have the town clerk's uh, page? That's the cash flow now, not. Maybe after vouchers? It's kind of buried. Well, Dan, I can I can read it. Yeah, that'd be great. There it is. Could you blow that up a little bit, Patrick? Thank you. Town Clerk's report for the period of October 1st, 2022 to October 31st, 2022. Total shares remitted to the supervisor, $5,973.09. Total shares remitted, um, amount paid to New York State Agriculture and Markets for the Spay Neuter Program, $47. Amount paid to New York State Department of Health for Marriage Licenses, $90. Amount paid to New York State Environmental Conservation for hunting and fishing licenses, $560.91. Total state, county, and local revenues, $6,671. And um, I hereby certify the vouchers numbered for um, 29658 to 29764, processed in the month of October 2022, are an accurate reporting of the abstracts approved for the payment for payment by the town board. Is there a motion to accept the supervisor's report? Clerk. I mean, the clerk's report? <laughs> so moved. Second. Thank you very much. All right. Aye. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, public comments. Do we have any public comments? No public comments. All right, very good. Um, let's move right into the first item of the agenda, resolution to approve the town of Red Hook Fire Protection District. Agreements. Patrick, you may want to face the screen so you see if it's looking at yeah, why don't you to sit over there so you can see what you're looking at. So if you know that they're sideways or vertical. Great. Um, this is resolution number <laughs> Deanna. Seventy three. Seventy three. <laughs> Approving Town of Red Hook Fire Protection District Fire Service Agreement between the Town of Red Hook and the Village of Red Hook and the Red Hook Fire Company for 2020 
2023 and 2024, and a fire protection district fire service agreement between the town of Red Hook and the village of Tivoli for those same years. Any questions? Pretty straightforward. And I so move. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Bill. Further discussion? If not, Julia Solomon. Aye. Jacob Testa. Aye. Okay. The great thing about getting all these grants that we get for you at home, because you're the taxpayer, is that it saves a lot of money. The downside is a lot of paperwork. And there's a lot of steps. Some of them are required and seem to be self-evident. Resolution number 74 is one of those. It's authorizing the implementation and funding in the first instance of 100% of the federal aid and state Marcuselli program aid eligible costs of a transportation federal aid project and appropriating funds therefore. What that means in plain English is we're getting a grant for 95% of what we estimate the project to be to replace the Aspen Wall Bridge. There's 5% that will come from the local share. And so we are, in essence, um, committing to that share. And so resolution number 74 codifies that. Nice to move. Is there a second? Jacob. Second. I had a suspicion <coughs> that I want to second that. And Mr. Supervisor, the one in the packet has a blank in it. Do you have a, the information for the blank? Uh, yes, from the unappropriated reserve funds. Okay. And that would be the B fund, unappropriated reserve funds. We have a first and a second. We have a, uh, an eye. We have two eyes. That is resolution number 74. Uh, we're skipping over a uh, police services agreement. We'll be looking at uh, that at our December 13th meeting. Paula. We are now at the point where we are going to be discussing the LWRP. Paula Schoonmaker is with us today. Paula has been heading up that task force that has been working on updating our local waterfront revitalization program plan. People use both words. Uh, first adopted back in 1995. And so we received yet another grant, talk about paperwork, right, Paula? Mm -hmm. um, from Department of State for uh, the LWRP. We have now seen all of the various sections, right? Mm -hmm. um, we have them up on our website, um, an easy link if people want to read through them. And we're at the stage now where we've got the final document, final draft, I should say. And we're going to uh, begin the, envir the required environmental review of the document and the program elements. Is that right? That's right. Okay. Is there anything else you would like us to know before we hand the baton over to the attorney to the town to walk us through some of the steps? Well, I, th I think we have uh, we have 13 wonderful maps that people would like to see, I think. Okay. And, um, I think we've complied with all the sections that are required, okay. and uh, uh, it's a it's a big document. But I think it's important for the future of uh, our waterfront area, and it encompasses for the first time uh, the the waters between the shoreline and our municipal boundary in the middle of the river. So that's an important new thing in this document. So I think people will find it interesting, and you know, it's a bit of a journey to get through it, but it's a, um, 
it's probably worth it. So I, yeah, I so Chris so. can. I think so, and, and thank you so much, Paula, for your leadership in this. Um, for the folks at home, why it's important to uh, have some control over the waterways offshore is because you never know. You may wake up one day and find out <clears throat> that the federal government is entertaining applications to have oil tankers sit and hang out um, in those waters until, uh, he says rather cynically, the price of oil is conducive enough to have them go to, uh, to shore um, to monetize it. And so um, having this plan in place, and we'll be talking about harbor and management uh, tonight, having this plan in place is important to make sure that we have um, some real, you know, some, some real documentation, real uh, seat at the table with the Department of State before they go ahead and they make some consistency determinations on these proposed actions. So with that said, Chris Shaw, would you like to lead us into some of the steps we are going to entertain tonight? I would, and I guess I would first echo that a lot of thanks are due to Paula for preparing all of this and uh, really doing an amazing amount of work in putting these draft documents together. Um, you know, we worked with our planner Ted and um, you know, putting some of the things together, but Paula did you well, know, and our ninety nine percent of the work. Our so. committee was great. And a, and yeah. a terrific yeah. committee of volunteers. Oh, very, so, yeah, right. we have a yeah. very right. steadfast right. committee. Yeah. So what you have in front of you ultimately today is going to be a resolution classifying an action and establishing the agency for a type one action. And the action that we're talking about encompasses uh, ultimately the consideration of approval of the uh, new LWRP revised draft that Paula has been working with the committee on and that you have uh, you know the draft in front of you and then also uh, the implementing document uh, for some of those provisions which is an amendment to your existing LWRP code provisions and the addition of a new one um, the uh, code provisions have been revised in part with input from the Department of State as to sort of their more modern version of, of how to do this and a lot of input from our planner, Ted, um, and uh, it's sort of slimming down some of this process a little bit. And then, uh, of course, updating the policies to match the policies that have been proposed in the LWRP. We have a new uh, component of this, which is a harbor management plan. Uh, Department of State has encouraged communities to uh, consider the adoption of a harbor management plan as part of their LWRP. And so this uh, proposed local law that would be uh, considered uh, as part of the seeker uh, review includes that harbor management plan. And so there's those two components of uh, what you're essentially being asked to classify. In your packet, in addition to those two documents, which are pretty voluminous, uh, you have an environmental assessment form uh, which describes the action. And it does identify that um, this will be referred for input um, to uh, the uh, Waterfront Committee, the, which is currently the planning board and will continue to be the planning board under the new proposed LWRP. Um, the town board will ultimately need to adopt these things, but the Department of State has to approve it as part of the process. Um, and then they actually have to get concurrence from um, NOAA, the federal agency. So this will be a fairly long process. This is the beginning. Right. Okay. Very good. And for the folks at home, at any time we adopt a program, a document, there's a project in the works. We have to do an environmental review. We have to determine what type of project it is, what classification. That's what we're doing here tonight. And we also have to make a determination who's the appropriate board or agency to make that, uh, conduct that environmental review. So we have resolution number 75. 
also dated today. And if I could also just note that we do also have a coastal assessment form, which is one of the um, review documents that we are to have on file, and that came in late from Ted. That's right. So I'll make sure that the court has that. That's available for the public. It's uh, classifying this action as type one and establishing the uh, town board as the lead agency. And I'll just read you the beginning preamble. Whereas the town board of the town of Red Hook is proposing an updated local waterfront revitalization program plan to update its LWRP adopted in 95 and is proposing amendments to Chapter 68 and the adoption of a new Chapter 89 of the town code to address the comprehensive update to the town of Red Hook's LWRP and to be consistent with the town of Red Hook comprehensive plan policy. And so um, we've reviewed the preliminary EAF and the thresholds for type one, type two actions and we determine that we believe this to be a type one action. Any question, town board members, before we go ahead with that? Okay. So I so move resolution number 75. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Thank you, Julia. All in favor, Jacob Testa. Aye. Bill Hamill. Aye. Thank you very much. Okay, and as Chris said, we have a new law. That accompanies with this. <coughs> Well, we just did that. Oh, we just did that. Were we on 75 or 76, Dan? Did I get the wrong number? We're up to 76. No, this was 75. We're on 74. We spoke that was 75. Yeah. Okay, we got that. But for the folks at home, this is just on the one agenda item. Just so you know on the review. Um, all of it is available. Quick link up front page of the town website. There was some discussion about harbor management and whether we should allow scuba, snorkeling, swimming. More to, more to consider. I know Christine Kane and your task force had strong feelings that it wouldn't be appropriate to allow swimming in, in the harbor management area, is that right? Well, I, you can maybe answer that, Chris. I think, I think Chris. that we decided to put it in there and just say if any is des if any spot is designated. Oh, if it's designated. Yeah, but okay. I think that we didn't. That's the way we left it. Yeah, if that's any sort is of designated. like okay. in the future. Okay, maybe. in the future. Okay, yeah. that's good. That's good. I like leaving the language in there. Yeah. To, right. Okay. Good, yeah. It would be nice if we had a spot where we could have access to our waterfront and of activities. Okay. Um, we have a renewal, the third annual renewal. I think we have a contract with our water systems operator. This would be the third and final year of a contract renewal. With C3ND Environmental Consulting, I think uh, it used to be called VRI, and now they've merged last year, if I'm not mistaken. This is resolution number 76, also dated today, authorizing that renewal. They are also doing the work for the village of Red Hook, and so that's been very helpful in um, being efficient and organizing um, for the folks uh, at home. There's been a lot of work towards um, replacing the water systems in the village of Red Hook, but also extending it into our TND area. Uh, and it'll be serviced by the same system. Uh, the village will provide these commercial properties and um, also in the case of tradition, that residential development. The benefit of which is obviously um, there's economy of scale. So if you are a uh, resident of the village of Red Hook 
and the number of users and that what, what's referred to as a special benefit assessment district, if the number of users um, is increased, then the share obviously goes down of the cost to, to maintain that system. So um, if that's of interest to you at home. All right, uh, we've got our memo from Hank and the Water Board asking for this extension. Did we vote on that? No. Let's vote on it. I, I'll so move. Resolution 76. Second. Is there a second? Thank you, Bill. As liaison to the Water Board, Julia Solomon. Aye. Jacob Testa. Aye. All right, last but not least, Eric is here, and it might be past his bedtime now. Eric, how long have you waited for this new agreement? Um, yeah, all your five life. Years, so years. Five years? It's been, it's, <laughs> I think it's been exactly that, five or six years to get to a new one. Um, so, um, town board members, any questions about the contract? It provides us, as we outlined earlier, uh, capital equipment monies for the public access channel and continues um, the 5% fee that comes back to us to help pay for and, uh, and other important services to our community. Any questions? We're all set. Okay, we've got resolution number 77. Double lucky. Dated 1116. Authorizing the execution of a franchise renewal agreement between the town and Spectrum Northeast LLC. I'm going to move this one. I would love to move this one off my table. My Second. Desk. Okay, thank you, Jacob. Make it fast. Okay. Uh, any questions? Any more discussions? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, oh, all in favor? <laughs> I was getting to you. Don't worry. I wasn't leaving you out. I'm getting forgetful. Bill Hamill. All right. Julia Solomon. All right. Okay, jeez. You're right next to me. You're just on the other side of the plexi. I can't forget you. Okay. Folks, we've been through our uh, agenda items rather quickly uh, tonight, so that's really terrific. Any public comments? Um, before I make a motion to go into executive session to discuss matters under negotiation, and um, the uh, fire, uh, the hire and fire of a particular individual. Um, I would like to wish everybody at home a happy Thanksgiving. Um, hope that you stay healthy uh, before, during, and after the holiday. But um, hope that you get some time with your your loved ones as well. So we'll be um, exiting and coming back if we take some action uh, a little later this evening. Okay. On that note, I would like to make a motion that we enter executive session for those purposes. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Julie yes. Solomon. Yes. Hamill. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thanks very much.